Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, so if you're new here, I'm Becca. I am a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic colour pencil drawings of animals. So we've been working our way through this badger tutorial. We've done um, most of it now. All that's left for us to do is to finish off the body and kind of create that out of focus effect. Basically, we've been working on drafting film, which is a really smooth surface. It's got no teeth whatsoever. And it's brilliant for achieving like really realistic detail. And then layered underneath this drafting film, if I just take off this layer. So as you can see, we've layered this on top of something else. So underneath, we've got the Fabriano Artistico um, hot press paper. And we actually added a few pan pastels on top of that as well, just to give us a bit of a base layer and kind of map in those colours that we could then see through um, the drafting film. It's good because it's completely transparent as well, so you can layer things behind it and still have um, basically like a fresh sheet of paper to start drawing straight onto, but have like tints of colours behind it. So we're going to make a start on the body. I'm not sure if we're going to get all of it done today or I might split this into two parts. It just depends on um, how we get going with it, really. I think it'll actually be a lot quicker than we might think. I know there's a lot to do in terms of like how much there actually is, but because it's all very much the same kind of colours and it's very kind of blurry and out of focus and all of those marks we're going to be making are quite soft and kind of like loose as well. It shouldn't actually take us as long as um, all of these like really tight details did on the face. So I think what I'm going to do is start with the Pan Pastel Black. Now I only use this on the Fabriano paper. I actually got a question as well as to why um, I've done it on the Fabriano paper underneath and not straight onto the drafting film straight away. Firstly, um, drafting film is very flimsy, it's very thin. So it always needs to be backed onto either white paper, coloured paper, or something that's a bit more sturdy. Um, and because I use extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper like all the time for my commissions and stuff, I've got loads of it anyway, so I just use that behind it. And then I thought just to map out a few of those colours, add a bit of a base layer, use the pan pastels, but on the Fabriano Artistico paper, simply because it's got a really fine tooth to it. So those this like loose pigment can almost like sit into the grains of the paper, into like the tooth of the paper. Um, whereas drafting film being completely smooth, this really wouldn't have anywhere to like sit into. So it would just be like layered on top. And for then us to go in with like colored pencils on top of that, we would be even more limited with how many layers we could add. Um, so I think that's like the main reason really, it just wouldn't blend out as well on the drafting film. and. You know it's kind of good to use that transparency of it to your advantage so anyway i'm going to try and work straight onto the drafting film at this stage with the pan pastel black and just kind of see how it works i have actually tried it before like working straight onto the drafting film with the pan pastel um in like a bit of a smaller test piece but i've not done it on a full-on like original piece like this so I'm just going to use a tiny little bit and kind of spread that pigment around as much as I can and just see how it works and like sits on the surface. So what you want to do is get your plastic knife with the sponge and very lightly just dab in that black pan pastel. I'm kind of also applying it to the edges of the knife as well, the edges of that sponge, just so I can work right up to that white fur and kind of not disrupt those lines. So I'm gonna apply it first to those darkest, darkest areas. So basically this whole bit underneath, um, like the nose area and just underneath the face is really quite dark. So that's where I'm gonna kind of offload that pigment, if you will. And as you can see, it's kind of a completely different feel to how it would be when it's like on Fabriano paper. A little bit does go a long way. So if you've got a scrap piece of paper, you might just want to remove a little bit, just like roughly remove that pigment from the back of your sponge, just so we've not got loads to work with. Then what we've got down already, you just want to spread that out as much as you can. 
I suppose it does blend out quite nicely, but you just don't need anywhere near as much of it. So once I've blended this out, we're going to see how the pencils, how the colour pencils work on top of it. And you want to use like the edges of your sponge to work right up to that white fur along the edge. This actually is also giving us a really nice like soft finish like blurred out effect which is actually what we're after to get that kind of out of focus effect to the body that's kind of going out especially those edges they're very much out of focus the attention and the quality is definitely on the face so that's why the face is so detailed and the body slightly blurred out so i suppose actually this technique is kind of helping us achieve that effect that like blurred out, blended effect. So I think that's actually gone a lot better than I initially thought. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing again. So just add a tiny little bit more to the sponge. Just spread around a little bit more of that black pan pastel pigment. Again, apply it in the most like saturated, darkest places of the fur to kind of offload that pigment from your sponge. You also want to kind of blend it and apply it in the same direction as the fur as well. Some places it's quite difficult to see what direction it's actually going in because the fur is quite dark. Um, but yeah, use like the edges and the bits that you can see as a bit of a reference for the direction.
So I think that's enough really with that black pan pastel. Um, we've definitely filled in that space and kind of worked into the areas that we're going to be kind of fading it out to. Definitely want to keep those edges looking really soft and blended and almost like fading out into the paper. Um, so I think I am going to leave that there. Just spread it round as much as you can and really blend that pigment out as much as you can. So something like that. And also if you just again wanted to do the same thing, so remove whatever is left from your sponge on a blank piece of paper. So it's as clean as you can get it. And then with that cleaner sponge, just work along those edges so they kind of fade out even more softly. So we finished with the pan pastel now and I've just moved my camera up so you can see what I'm doing on the top left hand section of the body. This part is probably the part that's furthest away, it's the most like far back from the, the face and all that detail. So it is very much out of focus, it's very blurred. All of those shapes seem to just be like melting into each other. So I've picked out um, four colours, all really really pale that I'm just going to be using like a mixture of to help us achieve this area here. So I'm going to start, I think, with the cold grey one, polychromo, and we've kind of made a start already because I've started to shade in some of those shadows behind these lighter tufts on the edge of the face. So you want to kind of continue on from where we left off up there. And also, if you just want to get a scrap piece of paper so you're not smudging any of that detail we've got on the face or any of that pan pastel that we've just added, um, with your hand just to protect the drawing and then yeah just carry on from where we left off work from those shadows into like the remainder of the body keep your pressure super super light throughout and even lighter as you kind of get to those very edges at the back where the image kind of fades off you also just at this point want to shade into the shadowy areas and shade around those like lighter shapes of fur that we can see. And I think when it comes to like um, things that are blurred like this, don't worry overly too much about like the proportions of stuff. I think that's very much um, something you need to worry about when like you're doing details and you want everything to be absolutely perfect and accurate. When you're doing something that's really out of focus, those shapes are so blurred and kind of distorted that if you get something slightly wrong, it doesn't really matter too much as long as you've got like those light and dark areas and we've managed to create that kind of out of focus effect. So keep everything super soft. Use like the bluntest part of your pencil as well. So use it either on its side or just like wear down a little bit of one side so you get that flatter edge to work with. I think when it comes to like the edges and keeping things out of focus and blurred, less is more, if that makes sense. If you want to really overwork it right to those edges, it can actually like just not look as good. I think the less pigment that you add and the less marks you add, the better it actually looks. We definitely want to create like a contrast between these edges and all of that tight detail in the face. I'm just going to add a little bit of masking tape um, just to kind of flatten down this bit of drafting film. As you can see, the paper's kind of raised up slightly. It's not perfectly flat against my drawing board. So I've just kind of, yeah, that's a lot better. Just flatten that out slightly. 
and then you want to go in with your silver grey luminance pencil very similar colour but this has a lovely subtle blue tint to it and you want to add this in like the same areas again keeping everything super soft you might even want to do like small circular motions as well in the same direction as the fur but just keeping all of your like mark making very soft and very sort of blended together if that makes sense we don't really want to be able to see any individual pencil strokes We don't want to see any like defined edges so I'm just going over that line that we can see from quite far away off and just shading over it to kind of blur it out a little bit keeping my pressure super light I'm literally just brushing it over the surface like I'm not even applying any pressure really To add a bit more darkness to those shadows, I'm going to go in with the cold grey 4 and kind of do the same small circular motions or like kind of oval motions in the same direction as the fur, just working into those darker shadowy areas with the flatter side of the tip, so kind of working at an angle with my pencil really. So take your time just building up that shadow, 
keeping the edges really, really soft by like just shading over them to keep that kind of line blurred. Um, yeah, just keep going with it. So I think I mentioned in my previous part of this tutorial and probably the ones before that as well, that I had an upcoming exhibition in Chelsea in London. Um, and basically my massive stag got chosen to be part of the summer exhibition amongst, I think there was like 114 other artists that had their work exhibited as well, which was like really, really good, amazing to be part of. Um, so I went down actually on uh, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, and today's currently Friday that I'm recording this. Yeah, it went really, really well. It's always like just so good to see your work in like a professional gallery space, like surrounded by other artists. You get to meet like so many people in your like line of work as well, which you don't always get to being an artist. It's quite like a like secluded like kind of like a lonely job because you're not around people every day you're kind of you know doing your own thing um so i think going to events and stuff like this is really good for like networking and um yeah you never know who you're going to meet so yeah i had some uh, good conversations with people met loads of other artists their work was like insane they had like um half an hour where they did like an awards thing as well i think it was like eight prizes um up for grabs and the main one being like a solo two week fully funded solo show which literally would have been insane but um yeah that went to someone that did like i think he did three oil paintings of like a girl on a piano and they were really good to be honest so he did deserve it um but yeah the the work was very varied as well there was so many different mediums and like subjects and styles um so it's quite nice having like all of that kind of together you get to see such a range of work so yeah it's still being exhibited um right until the end of august until the 29th um if it hasn't been sold by then which hopefully it has been sold by then but if it hasn't then i need to go and collect it um i think on the 30th the summer exhibition is actually like an open exhibition. Anyone can kind of enter it. Um, they do it every year. This is their fourth year that they've run the exhibition. I also think they do a winter one. Um, I'm sure I read that somewhere as well. Um, but yeah, Hester, who is like the managing director of the gallery, she's so lovely. Spoke to her on Tuesday as well. Um, but yeah very very good thing to be part of so if you're thinking of submitting next year then I would definitely recommend it it was just curated so well and yeah like I say you never know who you're going to speak to or or meet or who's going to see your work um I think in the art world the online space and getting yourself out there on social media is so important but it's also really good to meet people in person as well because you never know like what contacts they might have with like galleries and um, collectors and like anything. You just need to be kind of like in the right place at the right time, just keep going when it comes to art. So yeah, that was my busy Tuesday night. But yeah, I'm glad to be back in my studio drawing this badger. Hopefully we'll get it finished today, but like I said, I'm not too sure whether we will, because it's quite a lot that we've got to do, but because it's so blurred and all of those details are very soft, then we might do, we'll see how we get on. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on this top bit for now, this like lighter section of fur, before I start getting those really dark blacks in there. I also want some of this pan pastel that we can see underneath the drafting film to still be showing through, I want that to kind of be the faded off edge. So with your pencil, you don't want to draw right up to that section. You just want to leave it like one or two centimetres less, if you know what I mean.
I'm also just briefly going to go in with the warm grey one. Add a little bit of that kind of off-white beigey tone in there as well. You mainly want to work into like the lighter areas with this colour. Next up I'm going to go in with the dark indigo which is a lovely like dark blue colour and I'm going to use this at this point to add a bit of like an undertone um, of like subtle blue to areas of the fur, mainly working in those shadowy areas and again just keeping your pressure super light. You kind of want to keep it really light throughout the whole entire drawing when it comes to working on drafting film. If you're quite heavy handed with your drawing style, like naturally, then you might find working on this surface quite challenging. I'm also just going to work in and around these like lighter tufts of fur along the edge of the face. Just add a bit of a blue tint to those shadows. So I've added a little bit into like the edge of that really dark fur, more in like the centre of the body as we approach that area. I'm also just briefly going to use the dark sepia as well, which is a really dark brown, just to add a little bit of an undertone of like brown just underneath the edge of the face up here. You can see how like soft and wide you can get your pencil strokes if you work kind of directly on the side of your pencil. Keep it angled like literally on its side and you'll get some much better like blended results.
I'm just going to also bring it slightly to the left and just work a little bit into that edge as well. I'm also going to leave like another sort of one to two centimetres between um, the bit that we've kind of added as well. So that we've got like the pan pastel showing through from underneath about one and a half centimetres, depending on what scale you're doing as well. Um, and then we've got obviously all of those layers we've just built up. And then with this dark sepia, you literally want to do the same thing, but like another shift <laughs> about one and a half to two centimetres again just so everything's very gradually kind of fading out. And you can already tell that, um, which is good, means we're heading in the right direction. So I'm going to leave that there with the dark sepia. We've added a lovely kind of dark brown tone and kind of started off that really dark fur. Next up, I'm going to use the cold grey five just to increase those shadows even more so, especially on the top left hand section of the body as it kind of progresses further back. And remember with um, drafting film, we are limited to the amount of layers that we can add, but because we've gone in with such a light pressure so far, we can still add a few more just to increase the intensity of that shadow. And also with every single layer that we add, we're also going to just help to blend out any of that texture that it's picking up from underneath. Um, it's not actually the grainy texture of the drafting film which I've mentioned in previous parts. It's like the texture of the Fabriano paper that's layered underneath that, that is like what it's picking up on. Um, Cause drafting film's so thin that it's kind of picking up on that texture underneath, but it's not actually from the drafting film, if that makes sense. So you don't need to increase your pressure to squash it down. It'll just naturally soften out as we continue to add more layers.
Next up, I'm going to work into those highlighted parts of the fur using the White Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle Pencil, which is the best white pencil ever. And you just want to work into the areas that we've kind of left blank. Again, just with a light pressure and work into the edges of those shadows as well, just to help everything blend together and just to keep everything really soft and blurred and kind of out of focus. So I'm not going to use this white right up to the edge. I'm just going to kind of fade it off in between this shadow and like the pan pastel that we can still see underneath. Just to kind of blur the edges and make everything again just very gradual. Going over kind of dark grey colours with a white anyway does kind of decrease that saturation and also adds a bit of a blue tint that you can see here, um, which kind of adds to the fur in a way because we did want that kind of blue undertone showing through. Um, so this is just going to enhance that even more so in some areas. If you wanted to go back in with one of the colours that you've already used, like, I think I'm going to go in with the cold grey 4 again. Um, then you can do. Again, just to help remove any more of that 
grainy texture that it's picking up from the Fabriano paper underneath. Just add another layer to help soften everything out into those shadows. So also at this point, if you've got an eraser, um, like a bigger one, not like, I know I usually use my ultra fine Tombow eraser, which is tiny, um, but if you've got a bigger eraser, any will do, um, just along this edge, I think I've slightly brought it out too far left. I still want some of that pan pastel showing through from underneath. Um, so I'm just gonna lightly kind of dab away those top layers of pigment just along the edge just to soften it out a little bit more and you will find that on drafting film erasing pigment um, removing layers and just getting rid of something that you don't want is really easy because it is so smooth all those layers and colors are just sitting on the top of the surface so they just remove really easily So just lightly dab that across the edge, just to bring it more like inwards, if you will. And already that looks a lot softer along that edge. So I think I'm happier with how that's looking. You might not need to do this. It depends how far out you've gone and how much you want it to kind of fade off. But yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that like that. And then I'm going to go in with the Payne's Grey Polychroma, which is a really dark, like bluey grey. And I'm going to, again, just start to increase the darkness of this fur by working into the shadows and then slowly bringing it down below the face. So we get all that really dark chest in there. Also, if your pencil's quite sharp, you can literally work right up to the edge of the face and kind of work around some of those lighter tufts of fur. When it comes to tufts of fur, you always want them to kind of go and like finish in a bit of a point. Just makes the hair look a lot like wispier.
Just want to work into some of those darker shadows at the top as well. Just to increase that contrast a little bit more before we focus on the chest. So I'm gradually shading downwards into the rest of that fur, still keeping my pressure super light. I'm just going to move my camera down a little bit so you can see um, the bottom half of the body with what I'm working on. So I think just underneath um, the face and like the nose and this area here, you want to go straight in with your black. And just build that up gradually, still keep your pressure quite light to start with. Well, not to start with, throughout really, you never need to apply a hard pressure on drafting film. Work right up to that fur, shading around each individual tuft. You can also still incorporate some of these like undertones as like the dark sepia just to keep that like dark brown colour more at the forefront of that dark fur. So it's still tinted like a little bit brown in some areas whilst we keep building on those like darker pigments and also the same with the dark indigo just to get that like blue tint in there. You know, keep adding like subtle layers in between your layers of black.
back in with that dark indigo just add a bit more blue And back in with your black. going to go in with the dark sepia again to add some brown tones as we keep building up that dark fur
So again, you want to leave like two centimetres from um, the edge of that sort of pan pastel that you can see from underneath. It just makes that kind of fade off a lot more gradual. Just gone back in with the black, just to keep building up that dark fur. So literally shade right up to the edge of the face. We can't see much of this like white bit of fur just underneath the nose. So just bring that up even more. Just to kind of remove that like white strip if you have it. I think I'm also just going to go in with the Payne's Grey. Just taking this up the side of the face, following along the same direction as the fur as well. So it's kind of swooping off to the right as we progress up the face. So just follow along that fur, working around those tufts and filling in this little dark bit of fur as well on the body. Make sure you've got the shape of this white bit um, accurate as well. Make sure it's not too wide or too thin. If it is too wide, then bring your dark kind of shading in a little bit just to fix that proportion. So on the right hand side edge of the body, it goes kind of lighter again, um, probably because the light is like directly hitting it, whereas all of this fur underneath the face is very much in the shadow, so it's really, really dark. Um, so you just want to shade with this Payne's Grey about a centimetre all the way along the side of the face. And then just leave this bit as it is for now, because we can go in with some lighter colours. Just 
just carry on bringing this dark bit of fur down a little bit further. And you want to go back in with your black just to increase that shadow right up near the face. So you'll want to use more of the pointy part of your pencil when you're approaching, you know, right near that edge of the face, just so you can be a bit more accurate when you're shading around those individual tufts. And you almost want to like flick back into that area as well to make that fur look a bit more natural. Now we've also got all of these like whiskers around the mouth area as well um, but I'm going to leave them until right at the end so once we've done all of the body and we've done all those finishing touches then I'll add in those whiskers.
just going to darken this little bit up here as well with the black. So the parts in this really dark area that you can see that are slightly lighter, you just want to leave them out a little bit like I've done here, just not add as many layers of that black just to make a bit of a difference in terms of um, where those light and dark areas are. I think if we just went in with in this entire area just with the black um, and those other colours as well, it can just end up looking a little bit flat. So you want some areas to slightly stand out, even if it is a really, really, really subtle highlight. Um, so yeah, just keep building up this black in those dark areas. Next up, I'm going to go in with the cold grey 4 and you want to work into this right hand side. So just like from the edge of this really dark pigment, you just want to continue that on, but then fade it off along the edges. But we still want to be able to see some of this pan pastel from underneath as well. Um, so don't shade right to the edge, just kind of work along this area here.
With the cold grey 5, which is one shade darker, I'm going to work into this little bit here that we left in, in and amongst like the really dark fur. Just add a layer of that into this lighter area of fur. And then you want to go over that with your Payne's Grey. You then want to go back in with your dark sepia, add a few more brown tones on like the top left hand side of this dark fur. Just to help to blend out these very edges, I think I'm going to go in with the pan pastel knife with the sponge on the end. I've not actually applied any pan pastel to it. Um, I know it looks black, it doesn't really look like it. It looks quite dirty, um, but it is actually fairly clean. So what you want to do is just go along the edge of like kind of what we've done so far and just spread that around a little bit. Because this paper is so different to like other papers, um, basically every layer that we add is just sitting on top of the surface. It doesn't have those little ridges and little like bits of tooth or grain in the paper to kind of sit into. So everything's just kind of sitting on top of the paper. So it means that it blends really, really easily and you can kind of move it around a little bit. So as you can see, that's just softening some of those edges there. I 
and I've not got any pan pastel on here at all. This is simply just colored pencil that we're kind of spreading around. So that's actually working quite well, just to help soften those edges a little bit and just spread around what we've got down so far. Just following along some of those tufts that are kind of blurred and out of focus along the right hand side of the body. So these like thin tufts that were kind of flicking out on the right hand side, you want some of them um, varying in length and overlapping as well, going in sort of different directions, but you're kind of flicking at the end of each of your sort of strokes with this pan pastel knife. And you can see how soft those tufts actually look. If you can hear loads of scratching in the background, that's my dog, Bella. It's not me. <laughs> so I'm quite happy with how that's starting to really fade out now along those edges. We just need to spend a little bit more time building up um, some of this dark pigment where we can still see a bit of that grainy texture. And we also need to finish off and draw in those um, whiskers and just finish off those like tiny little details here and there, all those finishing touches. But I think I'm gonna leave that till the next part. So I am gonna kind of split this into two parts. So we've done most of it, I'd say, in terms of like building up the tonal value and starting to fade everything off. Um, but yeah, we're just going to finish off the next part in at part six, I believe that'll be. Um, and then, yeah, draw in those whiskers. So I hope you've enjoyed part five. Um, I think this has probably been another really long part, but I'm not actually sure how long I've been recording for. I start filming and then I just get so into it and start concentrating so much that I don't have a clue how long I've actually been recording for. But it does seem like quite a while, so... Apologies again if this is like another 10 million hour part to this tutorial. Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. And yeah, we've got just the final part left to do. So yeah, as usual, I have left the full materials list, the line drawing and the reference photo in the video description below. I've also left a link to my Patreon in the video description below as well. So if you're interested in doing more 
like coloured pencil animal based tutorials like this one. Then there's over two years worth of tutorials on there to choose from. If you've got any questions then please leave them in the comments below so I can answer them um, as soon as I can. I'd love to see your works in progress as well so please tag me in any posts you put on Instagram or any social media so I can see all of your beautiful badges coming together nicely. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and I'll be back very, very shortly with the final part where we'll just be finishing off all of those finishing touches and the body.